students and members in my uh, which its current title at this moment is uh, the consolidation of a continental hub in Latin America. Uh, subtitle infrastructure, energy, and integration in the three borders region uh, between Paraguay, Argentina, and Brazil. So, um, so I would like to begin with this image uh, just to provide some kind of broader context. Uh, so basically this is South America, when I is it over here. Uh, this is the La Plata River and the point that we're going to talk about is in this region where we basically have the borders of Paraguay on one side, up north Brazil and down south uh, Argentina. And my interest uh, along this research and along this, along this presentation is to talk about uh, the role of this node in a larger continental uh, center, both in current, uh, I mean how it is now and what it could be. And what uh, and, and how that also can define a possibility for uh, a project or a spatial research as a human designer. Um, so basically, this is the, the three border regions. This is the river that's established the frontier between Brazil up here and Argentina, and to the east, uh, I'm sorry, to the west. Uh, this is the Paraguayan side. Uh, so these are the three cities. Uh, Ciudad del Este on the Paraguayan side, Bosnia Iguazú in the Brazilian side, and uh, Puerto Iguazú in Argentina. Uh, this region is special, especially important and relevant by many reasons, one of which is this large hydroelectric dam here called Itaipu. Itaipu is still today the largest hydropower generator in the world, even is still producing more than three largest in China. It's the second bigger and the, the largest generator in the world. And this is basically, uh, among other things, is the, the, the generator of energy for the biggest industrial poles in the southeastern region of Brazil. For example, Sao Paulo, which uh, Fabian was just talking with you guys about. Uh, so that, that's just one of the main reasons because of which this place is very relevant. Uh, however, um, at, at first sight, it's not such a big thing. The whole, the three, the, the three cities all together, they just have a population of uh, a little bit less than a million inhabitants, 800,000. So there is kind of a tension between what, the, what this uh, is nowadays and the potential that it has. So to understand better this situation, I would like to go back a little bit before uh, in, in historical terms. And one of my claims is in this research that this whole region has uh, consolidated historically just very recently. Uh, because among other things, like this is the line of the Tordesillas Treaty that, that defined the borders between the empires of Portugal and Spain in the colony time. So, like, what I'm trying to say is that all this region is was uh, was uh, for centuries in a kind of in between space, undeterminated. It belongs to one side, belongs to the other side. Uh, there were uh, because well, the two crowns they did establish an agreement like 3,000 miles from an island in the Atlantic Ocean, but then everybody has its own interpretation. So this place was for centuries uh, an in between space. And that condition of in-betweenness in between uh, has, has had reflections on policy, territorial states, wars, and all the way that this uh, part of the continent has developed is conditioned or, or marked by this condition of in-betweenness. And for me, this is relevant not only in historical terms, because I want to bring to the attention of you that this region has only been defined and articulated since the second of the 20th century, which is very, very recent. Uh, the construction of this bridge linking the Paraguayan side with the Brazilian side and allowing Paraguay to reach the Atlantic Ocean by land uh, and dates only from 1950. Uh, the construction is, was between 1954 and 1960. So this is the, the bridge. Uh, and 
as you can see, the bridge is basically a, a piece of infrastructure in the middle of a, an empty, uh, not empty, but uh, I would say full of beautiful forest, <laughs> which is completely <laughs> different now. But, and so this is what is happening. This is happening, like, if you can imagine, uh, we have, like, the, the colonization process begins in South America around <coughs> 1490s in, in Paraguay, in this region specifically around 1510, 1515, and we're talking this is happening just in 1950, so just basically 400, 400 years after, basically. So uh, this just to situate that this is a region that is just now seeking its own identity, or what is gonna, how it's gonna project itself into the future. Um, so and in this uh, in this consolidation or in this articulation of the territory, my claim is that three infrastructure pieces are keys. One is the bridge. Uh, the second is the border in city of Paraguay, Ciudad del Este, which, uh, to uh, I mean, against all expectations of those three cities that I show you, Ciudad del Este, the Paraguayan side is the largest, even when Paraguay is much smaller than uh, Argentina, Brazil, uh, and this was a. a this, along with the bridge, was a key moment for the articulation of the national territory of Paraguay, but also of the whole region. So that's the foundation of the city. And the foundation of the city was pretty rudimentary. It was basically providing access of infrastructure, uh, open land for agriculture. When did, when did that happen? This is 1957. So the city is... Yes, 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 yes. This is, everything is extremely recent. Right? So the bridge is uh, around... Uh, Six, uh, six, 57, 64, the city is 57, and, and again, like, the whole city is built along a very elementary, elementary gestures, like, we could almost say there's almost a proto-urbanism, urban, urbanism. like, there's almost no urban design so far, but it's basically an axis, uh, agricultural colonies, uh, and a few more gestures, along with the bridge. Sorry, what's the, uh, uh, you know, it's right the bridge? Uh, That's good. Good question. I like surveyor pulls it here. I don't know. Okay. Good this is strange. Yeah. There is strange. Perhaps he's. I think this is a cloud.
but it's also a large commercial center of this very peculiar condition. Uh, the second thing that happened uh, is that uh, there has been a massive uh, change in the condition of the soil in the whole region. Uh, so this is the image of uh, this is basically the image that I showed you in, in black and white before. So there is the mysterious that I don't know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, but <laughs> what I, I do know is that all of this was basically the endless Atlantic forest, that picture that I showed you with the bridge. So uh, this ecosystem basically is spanned from Asuncion, like all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. And right now it has become into this which is basically like one of the larger centers of soy, soybean production in the world also. Uh, so there is a, a, a massive change uh, in, in, in territorial scale due to or related with, not just due to, but related with the, the possibilities that arise from the construction of these infrastructure pieces, the bridge, the new city, and the hydroelectric dam. Okay? And Recognizing these two circumstances, if, if we agree on these two circumstances, it's being the first that this region has just recently uh, begun to take shape, and that this process has been fostered by infrastructure, and that this process of development has brought uh, foreseen and unforeseen consequences. Uh, my claim here is that one of the biggest issues or problems that the region has to fulfill its full potential is that right now it's perceived as three cities is treated as such uh, in terms of planning policies, design policies, and everything else. And uh, my claim is that in reality, <coughs> functionally, even when we don't say it or we don't perceive it as such, it's not three things, but it's one thing. Right? It's like three uh, clearly defined districts of one larger human entity. Uh, but that's not the way we're seeing it or planning it. Like, we see it like that. And I think we should see it. Like that. And I think one very clear example of how this uh, problem is processing uh, right now, and this is very, very current, uh, is uh, this project. This is called, uh, this is a, a Oscar D. Myers project uh, for the Universidad de la Integración Latinoamericana, for UNILA, the University of Latin American Integration. Uh, it's a project for, made by the administration of President Lula da Silva. And the intention was to create a continental pole of education, basically bilingual, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and you're recognizing local languages and everything. Uh, so like, there's a very interesting ambition or aspiration. And perhaps for me, the, the, the interesting contradiction of, of, of this is that uh, this is located in the three-border region, but it's a highly centralized, clearly defined project that is just on the residence side, and that's it. So uh, perhaps uh, I think that perhaps this discussion of the university in this context could be one of the uh, leading uh, entry points to a design proposal or a discussion in terms of project, because this is an infrastructure that is more or less in the scale of what a urban designer can propose or can cop, like can foster. <coughs> And I think that it could be one of the many opportunities on this region to foster a real integration and a real, uh, to, to transform this place really into a, a, a node of continental relevance, which is uh, not at this moment, has the potential to be, but it's not. Uh, so this is under construction right now. And <coughs> this is uh, almost to, to wrap up uh, an image of this point that we're talking about in the in the broader regional context. So we have, uh, I really believe that this place has like amazingly rich in potentials. Like, so we have all the, or many of the larger cities of South America here. So Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Curitiba, Porto Alegre, from the, I'm sorry, Porto Alegre here, and Florianópolis over there. Here is Montevideo, Buenos Aires. Asuncion and the three border region here. And uh, one other reason, because uh, two, two more reasons for why I believe this issue is relevant is one is there is a, a 
institution in Latin America called IRSAN, which is an initiative for the integration of regional, regional infrastructure. And even there, like Professor Felipe Correa is making studies here, like with the South American project connected with IRSAN. And IRSA has two axes, axes uh, running along this region. One is in the east-west region, and it's called the Capricorn axis. And the other is in the north-south region, and it's called the uh, uh, Paraguay, Paraguay Paraná Waterway, which is the combination of these two rivers. So uh, I think uh, that this, I'm not the first person to see this. Like, there is a, a huge potential in this in this place, like in terms of agriculture, commerce, uh, production of energy, and a lot of different issues. Uh, but I think that the problem in terms of design and urban policies and everything is that we haven't realized that we need to try. We need to start dealing with this region actually as a one node, not as, as three different things. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Anybody want to start us out? Well, it's not clear what do you want to do. So I think while well, you 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 I think we presented the problem that I think is it's very interesting. So so Thank you show uh, that there are many reasons that you you can decide. But I I have I have a clear idea of what is the what do you want to propose? What is what is the what is the target? And, and, and also, what is the, in which way you want to, to what is the method? Uh, right. Because there are many things on our table uh, with completely different scales, from the scale of the city, from the scale of the, of the, of the two, three, two, these border cities that there are many examples in the world that has the same problems of this map about South America, Latin continent. So, and. I have a, I'm a little bit confused about what is the what what do you want to what, what do you want to do to achieve well, yes uh, what is uh, what is the final goal. The image right. right well there right. there are two aspects there like one is methodology to study and what we want like I'm gonna be in well, with what we want because I think it's, it's what I talk less there are at least three <coughs> possible things and I haven't decided which could be uh, a design intention for this. Research. One is the university. This university that I, that I show you. That, let's say we discuss this university campus as an entity that should uh, be uh, stretched upon three cities uh, as a larger gesture. So that that's a very clear entry door for me. Like it could be that. And the second thing that also could be, but I'm not exactly sure how, but I know it's relevant is that. Uh, there is a very uh, special condition on this river. The, the Paraná River was never uh, navigable uh, from, uh, just to show you. So Sao Paulo is here, the river that uh, Fabiano was showing basically makes a large arch and come all the way down. But over here there were uh, huge falls. And actually the, the hydroelectric dam is in the place of the falls. Like it's actually put it in subsidiary. So uh, this uh, river was never navigable all the way down. And one of the, the things that the original project has here was a very complex system of uh, like uh, locks and uh, excuses and everything to <coughs> allow navigation in the north-south set. And also uh, a cargo train to allow the crops to go from the whole hinterland to the Atlantic Ocean. So that's pretty much hardcore infrastructure, but that's also a possibility of, re reflect, uh, of reflection on project terms. Those two things never happen, like, and either the, the system of, of navigation, to allow navigation in the river, or to allow the connection of cargo. Uh, so those things also could be uh, issues of spe spatial reflection or, or project. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Raquel's project in that there's this sort of uh, there's this, there's this disconnect, but there's all sorts of disconnects. It sounds like there's a political disconnect, an institutional yeah. disconnect, and a physical disconnect. Yes. Are you mainly interested in physically connecting these places uh, alone, or are you interested in doing socially, politically, otherwise connecting them, or sort of physically connecting them for the purpose of, for example, politically? You know, is it either or and both? Well, I think. How should I say? I, I think I have a hybrid intention in, in those terms. Like I would like to prove, 
I mean, in terms of product, like I think I see my thesis in the end like something that has one part of more theoretical reflection and other part that is proposing a concrete design. So let's say the university could be a very manageable design issue. Let's say if we look at this one, or even these other aspects that I'm like talking about infrastructure. But nevertheless, I, I feel I I I I understand that the historical reflection or the theoretical reflection of on why are we facing the problems that we are facing is very relevant because uh, I think that at this moment and I, I, like just remember these two conditions this thing has crystallized also just 40 years ago so this, this is very very new for everyone and just a, a quick facts uh, there are like more than 200,000 Brazilian and descendants living in the Paraguay mm -hmm. And there is a colony, a colony of Paraguay migrants in Argentina, it's over a million. And they're like, so these, the people are already shifting and moving and the real integration and economic process are already existing, they are in place, like they haven't waited for any authorization of any government or everything. Because that answers part of the question that the lack of integration is not one of culture. Right. No, not of course. So that's the problem. No, it's no structural. It's no, no. It's more, more political, uh, and let's say a, a, a question of poli policies, academic perception, uh, and a reading of this of the history of this region. Like, uh, to be truly honest, like in term, in, in practical terms, people move here like in the European Union. Like you can move just with your ID, but you don't need a passport or a visa. Like mm -hmm. people are moving everywhere and getting married here and moving there and working there and commerce. So all of these aspects. In practical terms, like for a citizen walking on foot, like this is already happening. Integration already happened. So this is interesting but because the way the just, has, it is actually there's this tension, right? It's simultaneously very integrated, but at the same time, you made a really powerful claim that it's not integrated. Right. So I guess I wonder what, what, in what way, is it not integrated? Well, just to see the Brazilian government investing billions of dollars in a university of integration in a block just mm -hmm. on the inside, I think talks a lot of how, for example, the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. uh, how many bridges there are? I'm sorry? How many bridges there are? That's very interesting. Just one, we're discussing the construction. Per second. You need more. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So there, there, is, there is one east-west, and there is one north-south between Argentina and Brazil, of course. Mm -hmm. But there's, like, this is, you're right. The, right you now, right now, the infrastructure is just, like, the backbone. Mm -hmm. But my point is, just this backbone that was built, which is very... Uh, light, very incomplete, allow changes of a scale that I think nobody really believed in 40 years to follow this to happen. Uh, starting again, starting from here and finishing over there in Sao Paulo in the industries. I mean, the theater rigor and all of this is coming. Yeah, that, that, that's the most kind of um, legible thing to me and, and the most almost shocking is that diagram of the, the city layout, the actual just this sort of partition grid system. Right. It's the, the fish bone. And, and the, the fact that that crosses over, this, I mean, you point out that there's many models of this kind of transnational, binational things. The, the ones that jump out near Basel, right, so yeah, France was a majority of the other. Um, you might do well to look at them because they're doing one of these EVA projects that, that they've been doing in Germany. The next one from 2016 is uh, Metropolitan Basel. So it's the first of these EVA projects that is actually located at Trinational. Uh, yeah, the, the, the other one though, and it's a very different model, is the U.S.-Mexico border at San Diego, uh, mm -hmm. which is a, a very different thing. There, there, there's a lot of literature and scholarship by people who are the University of there and UCLA that is saying the same thing that you're saying. Your claim is that there's a, there's a social integration in many ways, there's a cultural integration, uh, there, there are ecosystems that are crossing the border and so on, but the infrastructure. If you look at the work of Teddy Cruz, who's based in both San Diego and Tijuana, uh, he, and, and, and some of his writings actually just have some amazing uh, aerials of them too, the border, and the playa, the, the, the wall hits the beach and the ocean. And you can clearly see certain infrastructural gestures that just stop at the wall. Uh, and so there's a number of proposals of trying to adopt a kind of policy scenario that is able to manage this inevitable. But those are very different models. One is, uh, um, you know, more familiar with the American model, maybe, but 
that one already had uh, two distinct sort of metropolitan regions that eventually grew together. So the question is how do we sort of facilitate this? And then are you willing to mention that? Facilitate yeah. that? That's what the Bush administration is for. Make the wall. Sometimes I heard voices that you have problem solved. Uh, but, but in many cases, that's kind of model from the models of the media. But it, it's infrastructural and it's policy because the social exchange, as you said, is already there. It's already happening. So it's just how you generalize that. But I, I, just the last thing I want to say is that uh, I appreciated the, the presentation, though. It's very clear uh, to me. And, and the thing I liked is, is that you just hear the claims. These are the claims I'm making. Uh, and and it's, it was very easy to follow it, but I agree. I don't know what the project is. Just yet. It's not really similar. Yeah, this one your claims are clear. It's not <laughs> similar from yours in that there are certain processes and potentials and so forth, but how do you enter into this? Uh, really the layers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the word consolidation mm -hmm. seems critical to me. If you haven't discussed what you mean by that or how that would take place. So, Maybe there's something in consolidation as a concept. That, that implies a kind of aggregation, maybe of diffuse elements or something. But I, if that's the right word, then there's something that maybe we can talk more about. Or it's the wrong word. It's just something that's right. That's something. I think that the difficulty with it is, is figuring out the scale of intervention. And I mean, there's a scale of analysis, but the scale of analysis is not necessarily the same as the scale of intervention. And when you're dealing with policy issues, of course, that's very hard to, to deal with in a design project. Um, but uh, I think that the, the notion of I mean, the, the very fact that, that infrastructure has shaped this territory politically as well as physically um, is something that one might work with then in the way in which um, you know, infrastructure can act. And it doesn't necessarily, it, and, and the, instead of seeing it as a disadvantage, maybe see the, the sort of interscalar nature of an intervention that actually something relatively small, like these bridges, I mean the bridge, you know, compared to the territory, um, that something relatively small can actually have an enormous impact. So um, it's, and I think it, it, that you're, it's an interesting point here that program isn't necessarily, I mean like the university or whatever, isn't necessarily going to do um, what you're looking to do. It's interesting that the, the infrastructure sort of led, one of your points is that this was sort of led by infrastructure. But now I think the part that came out in response to uh, Eunice and uh, Jason's points is that now, given that there's these sort of unforeseen developments coming from that initial infrastructure, that now the infrastructure really lags. Yeah. Um, and that there's this level of social and other integration. But now, in a way, you sort of see the flip side of 40 years ago, that now the infrastructure is way behind the reality of the place. I, that's a, that just seems like an interesting kind of problematic too. Because I think that, that element which you drew out in response to their questions, I think is really important. That there actually are all these forms of integration that have arisen from the bridge, but now the infrastructure that actually exists is, is totally unreflective of this new reality. I think is, is yeah. super interesting. Yeah. Well, one thing that I, I didn't mention, but I think I want to, to say, is this notion about infrastructure shaping the territory, even politically. Yeah. And it might seem some anecdote, but. Uh, like literally the position of Itaipu and the fact of that the hydroelectric dam is a binational entity uh, is also connected to the fact that even in 1960s that region was still on border plane. So like, I mean, I'm saying that the two countries they basically agree on disagree. I mean, uh, we're gonna be the build the dam and it's gonna be a lake and whatever is in this country is gonna be under a lake. And, and the dam belongs to both of us and that's it. So that was the way it was, so, I mean, there is literally uh, a use of infrastructure as a way to shape a policy and border system. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that, that's physically literally in this case. But that, that raises the issue of economy. We didn't really talk about that. Mm -hmm. like, but there's, I think there are huge economic forces behind this, how this territory is shaped. 
But yes. the infrastructure is just part of it. But, and yes. I would say probably a lot of economical interests are not, they don't want to have this collision. They want to have these separate things because of economic reasons, trading and stuff like that. And it's in the end probably all about resources, you know, about the soybeans and the, and the water damp. So I think there's a huge, probably, like the economical issue is, is, is quite, big, quite strong. I agree with that. Right? I mean, I'm not sure. But yes, uh, even in a more modest scale, just considering the three cities or how the three cities move or work, like all the commerce happen on the Paraguayan side, mm -hmm. but the, the clients come from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And in general, the owners live in Foz in the Brazilian side because it has very preserved. So uh, just if you look just at this the scale of the three cities, it's very visible that the economic forces uh, play a very strong uh, hand and they and that like kind of each part of the uh, of that operation has a very specific character in function of these economic forces. And if you look at bigger like the soybean and the commerce, because the soybean is planted in Paraguay, but goes to <coughs> here in the port of Paranaguá. So like yes, and do you think their economic forces are against the the you know the, the I, they I want to keep the separation? I wouldn't say that they're against. I would say, and again that's a it's a claim, it's a new hypothesis of work, is that all these forces are just playing their own game. Like the soybean producers, they're just one big lobby. And the international commerce, either black, gray, uh, falsification, or just direct smuggler, or, you uh, know, like they're another set of interests. And like no real government agency, either as nations or other as a gathering of nations, are like sitting in the table and talking with these forces. Like they're just playing their game. You know, using the infrastructure that was built for other reasons and other projects, like for 40 or 50 years ago. So, well, one of the interesting things was the aerial you showed, <coughs> uh, the, the sort of time lapse thing, I think it was from the 60s or 70s, and then one more contemporary, where you see the urban fabric kind of filling out. It's kind of green, more off shot. But in any case, what it showed is a, a real density. Yeah, this guy, so you can see the fish skeleton. <coughs> and on the right, it's predominantly on the east side of it where it really fills out. Mm. Um, and I wonder, you know, if you, if you look at that, the one in San Diego Commission, when NAFTA was signed in the 90s, which is mm. the North American Free Trade Agreement, right. that caused a massive morphological sort of reorganization mm. because of the Machia Boros, which are the, right. the uh, yeah. factories where they assemble things in Mexico and ship them in the U.S. so there's points on the border where there's a tariff <coughs> on tax-free um, exchange there. Mm -hmm. My argument is that it's an exploitive practice and that's not a good thing. That's, yeah, that's just my personal politics. But, but it, or, it reorganized some of the patterns of the organization. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.